Welcome to July Asset News, to get top stories in cryptocurrency and July assets and break it down to bite-sized pieces. Today, concerning news. First up, open interest on BitMEX drops 16% as investors withdraw 37,000 Bitcoin in less than 24 hours. And the whole reason behind this is BitMEX was hit with a charge by the CFTC, which states they did not follow Anti-Money Laundering Act, as well as opening up an illegal exchange. Also, Ripple wins U.S. patent for new Oracle-based smart contract design. And sometimes one of the talented kid on the block just needs a little bit of time to get going. And lastly, we're going to take a step back and look at the 20 fastest growing industries for 2020 and beyond. And the reason for that is because these types of industries are going to need a new crypto-based domain. And I can tell you, they're going to come calling at some point. But before we do that, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. Kind of an odd day, especially with what's going on. But it is Friday, October 2nd, around high noon Texas time. And what do we have? Well, Bitcoin is up 0.2%. And this is amazing because the market, the traditional markets have taken a little bit of a tumble. Uh, cryptocurrency market took a little bit of a tumble because of twofold. First of all, uh, BitMEX, what we just talked about, we're going to get into that real quick. And second of all, unfortunately, President Donald Trump for the United States has contracted the coronavirus. And on Twitter, I had said, hey, uh, you know, you should have worn the, your mask more often. And that's just a true statement. Should have worn the mask more often. That's just how it goes. Now, I'm not here saying that I want uh, President Trump to, you know, anything ill to happen to him. Coronavirus is an awful, awful virus. And it took the life of my nephew in Colorado. So all I can say is, you know, Godspeed and hopefully he recovers. But uh, these two pieces of news uh, really were what I thought would actually tumble the market, and it didn't. And I talked about this yesterday. If this was 2017, we would have seen such a massive fall. It would have been not unprecedented, but it would have been one of those days where it's like 20, 30, 40%, who knows? But when we look at what's going on here, this terrible news that's going on, you have to comprehend the maturity of this market. Has anything changed with Bitcoin? Has Bitcoin been hacked? Has any cryptocurrency digital asset just come out and go, you know what, we're just a straight out and right scam and we don't do absolutely anything. No, nothing has changed. It's just we had a exchange that uh, just had an enormous amount of hubris and went around and just said, you know what, we can do whatever we want to. Well, you can't do that. And um, there was a there was a statement. Uh, this is from Ryan over to Alex Masiola. He had a really great statement. He said, you know what? He goes, people had talked about how regulators were asleep at the wheel and they don't do anything. Well, guess what? They have been hitting back hard, not only with BitMEX, but also with salt lending. They put a big hurt on them on top of the, the kick ICO. So they're not asleep at the wheel. And these types of investigations don't happen overnight. They've been doing this for a long time, methodical laid out plan. So that whole statement actually changed my whole view of uh, US government regulations. So anyhow, let's take a look at how bad the market is. So Ethereum is down 1%. It did dip below 350, but <laughs> not too shabby. Tether's tether. XRP, 23 cents, watch out. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, 2%. Binance Coin, 1.8, up. And then some other different ones here. So let's see how we're doing. 3% for Cardano, almost 5 for Monero. That's weird, Monero, why would that, uh, there's no reason for that to go down. 4% for Tezos. Huobi token up 1.2, wrap Bitcoin up 0.3. Wow, wrap Bitcoin, 26, wow, congratulations. 0 0.9 for Aave. And then down we go, compound down five, but nothing too fantastic, nothing too uh, like crazy. So I mean, in all honesty, I'll I'll take all these numbers and look, Celsius Network, uh, still hanging above a dollar at 2.1% increase, 26 for the week. So the, all these different things, look, we got a solid market on our hands, boys and girls, and I, for one, am excited. Let's jump in. So first up, interest on Bitmax dropped 16% and people took out their Bitcoin. Not surprising. Let's see what happens. It's not that Bitcoin was actually taken out, but it was actually, it was taken out, but where it was taken out and put into. That's the story. According to Arcan Research's post on Twitter, the former yearly low for the uh, open interest was painted on the 30th of April when the open interest bought it at 61,000 Bitcoin. If you're not familiar with open interest, it's okay. I'm not a big uh, derivatives trader, you know, stuff like that. But open interest is just all the different options or futures that have not been settled. So if you have a high amount, 
that means that they are unsettled. That means that they're still ongoing. So people, you know, are actually in the game. When the open interest goes low, that means people are closing their positions. Like, I don't want to play the game anymore. And off they go. Anyhow, the post adds that in the wake of the CFTC development where they went in there and they said, hey, BitMEX, you can't do this. We're going to slap you down. We're going to arrest some of the some of the co-owners. The CEO is still at large, but we'll get them soon. The trader said, hey, I'm going to close my position. And so in April, this is October 1st. So in April, you had it at, at what was considered rock bottom, 62,000. Now look where we're at, 45,000. So uh, ever dwindling open stance. Anyhow, moving on, Coinmetrics data shows that during the same period, a total of 37,000 Bitcoin or almost 400 million was moved out of BitMEX as investors panicking sought to secure their funds. Coinmetric adds that Binance and Gemini captured over a third of the BitMEX withdrawal. So this is interesting because you would think that Coinbase being as big as they are, that they would get the bulk of the lion's share of the outflow of Bitcoin, but that's not the case. And I think people are starting to wise up and go, you know what? Coinbase's fees are just crazy. The customer service is awful. We don't want to go over there and, and all the different shenanigans that are going on with that and all the different things that they're listing. We want to go someplace with a little bit more stability and the fees are not so god awful high. So maybe we're going to take a look at Binance or Gemini or fill in the blank wallet exchange of your choice. I don't know. But uh, that I think is one of the big compelling stories. Then moving down. Uh, there's a quote from uh, Thor Chan as the CEO of Axe Exchange. First of all, let me just tell you, uh, Thor Chan, that's a great name. Thor Chan, what a great name. But he says at a, at a deeper level, we believe it's a sign of the maturing market, exactly what I was talking about before. Thor says, whatever is unfolding over at BitMEX is something all exchanges should pay close attention to and learn from. Absolutely. First of all, really what you have to look, take a look at is are centralized exchanges really needed anymore? Are they something that's good? I mean, it's a question I need to ask. My answer is we do need centralized exchanges because the people, the masses, the, the vast majority who are out there have no idea what's going on behind the scenes. They have no idea what's happening and the revolution that's really going on. So they're going to need a place like a Coinbase, a place like a Gemini, a place like a Binance, because that's what they're used to. They're not used to Uniswap. Are you out of your mind? I mean, that's just like next level stuff. I mean, for us, it's kind of like, you know, normal normal stance but for them it's like what are you talking about so yes we're gonna need centralized exchanges but moving forward are we really gonna need them no we're not but decentralized exchanges are on the rise and i think they're actually good for what's about to happen but there's another thing and that is that the exchanges that actually work with the regulators are not going to get slapped down i mean look what happened with gemini and zcash they went to the regulators and go hey we want to be able to give our customers the ability to use shielded or private transaction with zcash and they took them a long time it didn't just happen overnight and they said okay and they approved it and as of two days ago you can use totally shielded and private transactions out of gemini using zcash see how that works it just takes a little bit of time. Adults in the room, that's usually how it works. It's finishing up, meanwhile, the BitMEX executives who also face a violation of the Bank Secrecy Act deny the charges against them. Of course. I mean, what, what are they going to say? Yeah, we're guilty. <laughs> Come on. Sorry, that was, that was pretty funny. But, I mean, the whole thing is this. Um, they made uh, over, I think, around a trillion dollars. And I think uh, Hayes, the CEO, I mean, he made hundreds of, maybe hundreds of million dollars, maybe 300 million. I can't remember what the, the total was. But the fine was 250000 and maybe five years in jail. So I'm going to ask you a question. If you could take, I don't know, $100 million and someone says, you got to spend two years in jail because you're not going to spend five years in jail because you're rich and you got good lawyers and they'll probably get you down to like a reduced sentence. And you also had to pay 250000 Would you do that? Would you do it and move about your day? Or would morals not allow you to do it? That's the big question. Would you do it or would morals get in the way? Let me know what you in the comment section. Let's move on. Next up, Ripple wins US patent for new Oracle-based smart contract design. And I got to tell you, I got to tell you, this is pretty exciting. Now, I know every time that we're talking about, you know, the different market, I go to XRP and I say, watch out. And people say that's negative. It's not negative. You know what it's like? It's like that super talented kid that you have on your football team that you're coaching. I don't know if you coach, but uh, I mean, you have a talented kid on your football team. And he's just not living up to his potential. And you just, I mean, you could do one of two things. You could coddle him like, you know what, Jimmy, it's okay. You're going to be all right. Get out there. Or you can say, you know what? You gotta, you gotta get in there. You gotta do things. You gotta, you know, make, make some, make something happen. This is the type of thing that I say with. I look at XP. I'm like, you know what? You got 
all the different things about you. A lobbying group where you meet with regulators. You are in the third position. You've got uh, your flush with cash. You have a lot of acquisitions. You've got a lot of things that are going on. What is going on? Why can't you make it to the next level? And now people are going to tell me, well, it's because they're, they're doing this and because of regulation. Blah, blah, blah. I, I got you. I got you. But the thing is, the price action stays the same and just kind of frustrating. That's all I'm going to say. So this is a pretty good story here. So earlier this week, Ripple Labs received a patent number 10,789, blah, 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 for a smart contract that can use oracles to connect a distributed platform to a variety of different real world data. And just real quick, here's the patent itself. And there it is. And it actually was approved. That's the interesting part. But what's really fascinating is that it was originally filed in June 2018. That says that a company has long-term vision and they have gone all the way back and that all this different work and the hassles and the paperwork and the price just to get this one patent. So to me, that says, hey, you've got a plan for the future. I like to see that. One example of a use case provided includes using the smart contracts to automatically settle options. Contracts when pre-agreed conditions are met, such as a company's debt to equity ratio hitting a certain threshold. So the debt to equity ratio, it gets hit money's released, everybody's happy. Another example for the oil industry is feeding data on the density of a specific crude oil shipment to help a smart contract determine whether to make a trade. That is fantastic information. I don't know much about oil, but maybe the higher the density, the better off it is. I have no idea. But you can use real world data. That's the whole point of oracles to bring them into blockchain because blockchain is great, but it can't take off real world data. That's why you need oracles. So look, this is great news. This is great news for XRP. I think if they want to get in that game, fantastic. Smart contract functionality, as well as oracles, sounds like a winner of a plan. And not to mention, if you don't know, there's going to be a nice little airdrop for Spark or Flare, a Spark token. And uh, we just got this uh, yesterday that if you have a Celsius wallet, uh, they will be airdropping in your Celsius wallet. All you got to do is have the XRP there. Don't have to do anything. Don't have to transfer anything. Just has to be in the Celsius wallet. Pretty nice. Same thing with Uphold as well, but uh, Celsius, that is a new addition. I'm hoping that Voyager will do it, but uh, we will see. And then lastly, it states here earlier this year, and this is just on top of the BitMEX. Uh, earlier this year, derivatives exchange BitMEX, which is now facing legal troubles. Uh, we know that. Awarded a 50,000 grant to a Bitcoin core contributor to develop a Bitcoin smart contract. So uh, pretty good. I don't know if you have to do anything there because BitMEX is in the toilet, but uh, we'll see. Anyhow, that's it for that section. I thought it was fascinating. Good job for you all, you XRP holders. Maybe this will be something, but again, a lot of good news. Price stays the same. Let's move on. Next up, I was just perusing the internet and I came across this. It was a pretty good article from Seek Business Capital. And it just talks about the 20 fastest growing industries over 2020 and beyond. I'm always just interested to see, you know, where the world is actually going. So I was reading this and it just lays it all out, you know, one through 20. This is all the different things that are uh, hope to uh, advance over the next, you know, three, five, 10 years or something like that. Healthcare, again, at the top, uh, information services, family services, uh, medical diagnostic. But that's not the big story. The big story here is that when I was thinking about this, I went into what I had covered uh, a couple of weeks ago, which was unstoppable domains. And unstoppable domains, if you don't know, there's really two things that it can do that I see that are, is fantastic. First of all, you can simplify your sending and receiving of like your crypto address. So you don't have to send somebody like this three PFS, blah, blah, blah thing, which no one understands or knows. Uh, but it can just be this, danlikes.crypto. That's one of the domains I actually bought. And they can send you any kind of crypto. It can Bitcoin, Ethereum, Theta, whatever. And it's just super simple to use, right? And then that's the first part what's great about unstoppable domains. The second one was, and I thought this was even bigger, you can buy dot crypto domains and you can hold and sell them for later. Like uh, one of theirs, like sex.crypto sold for $90,000 uh, just last month, August 28th. So uh, that's pretty big. Now, is this gonna be like a get rich quick scheme? Absolutely not. This could be, you could be holding this forever. Like Michael Saylor over there at MicroStrategy who bought all those Bitcoin, he held on to, his different uh, domains that he had bought. I could have sworn one of them was voice. It was on the Anthony Pompliano and he sold it for like, oh my God, like $30 million or something like that. So, but he held on to it for like 15 something years. So just so you're aware, uh, this could be a long play. However, it could be a big play and uh, it doesn't cost too much. So I was thinking of merging uh, the two things together and I'm actually bought a couple of things already, but I would just tell you that these are the ones that I would definitely look into uh, because I think they could be huge. And Number one on the list right here, home health care services. Here's a little trivia. Ah, 
I was in the army. I was a medic. Then I became a nurse. And then I actually got into home health. I worked in there for 10 years. And I was actually a director of medical services for a nationwide chain for home health care. And I can just tell you that there is a ton of money in home health care. That's all, all I will say about that. But And it's very competitive. There's home health care companies all across the nation. There's a bunch of them in probably your city that you live in. So I thought to myself, well, if I want to be uh, competitive in that market, I probably want to have a fantastic uh, domain or website. And I thought, you know what would be great? Top Home Healthcare dot crypto and it's only 40 bucks i tried home healthcare dot crypto but that's a uh, premium and they don't sell that right now but if they did i will probably be buying it for sure also i thought how great it would be just be have loans dot crypto but that wasn't available but i said well how about loans 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 because there's one called lambda 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 oh sorry <laughs> camel 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 lambda 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 is revenge of the nerds Camel, camel, camel is from or is for uh, if you're an Amazon uh, FBA seller, it's a really good way to do research. So uh, they, they just took camel, camel, camel and everybody, everybody uses it. So I thought, well, how about loans, loans, loans dot crypto? I mean, pretty simple. And then for the algorithm, if they're doing searches, I mean, this would come up like right away. So perfect. If you want to sell that. Lowest loans dot crypto, that was a pretty good one. Phoenix bank dot crypto, sure. Or where I live in, El Paso banking dot crypto. I mean, imagine a bank coming up to you going, hey, we want to be the only one that uh, is a bank here and, and has a dot crypto. Well, I have that domain. I'll sell it to you for X or whatever else it is. So sure, I would do that. Also, here was a good one. Smartest contract. I think smart contract would be good, but that's not that's not there. But smartest contract, sure. And then I want to go into the medical park. That's pretty much my background. And as you can see, home health care services, outpatient care centers, individual and family services, other information, officers of health practitioners, medical and diagnostic laboratories. These are all the top, well, top six that are really going to grow in the upcoming year. So wouldn't it make sense to get a domain that is more towards that as we get into more towards cryptocurrency digital assets? Why not? So there's a service called MDVIP. MDVIP is a private practice where you pay a certain amount per month, but you have access to your family doctor. And it's a pretty big um, business. It's uh, spreading throughout the nation. So I thought, well, MDVIP at crypto and it's available, but it's 800 bucks. I don't know if I can get that right now, but also I thought, well, orthopedics, people are getting older. Knee replacements. How about the orthodoc.crypto? I would definitely buy that one. Actually, if uh, this isn't available when you look for it, it's because I bought it. And here's where I'm going to merge medical, what's going to happen in the future uh, as far as like uh, medical services, and what's going to happen in the future as far as cryptocurrency digital assets. If you don't know, another little trivia for you, uh, I got a really bad left leg. It's probably all the sports and different stupid stuff I did as a kid, but uh, I, I had a really bad knee and it was so bad that I couldn't really you know, bend down to pick up anything. So I actually got stem cell injections when I lived in Vegas and guess what? Works out great. Now they're about 80% back and I can only say good things about stem cell therapy so far. I think it's one of the futures. So if you got that future, well, wouldn't a doctor probably need this type of domain stem cell doc crypto or maybe but there's another another type of uh, niche which is called PRP and PRP is piggybacked on stem cell therapy you can look it up it's called platelet rich plasma and platelet rich plasma is also what they did on my other knee uh, which is what they actually take out blood they spin it off, they get the platelets and what's called platelet-rich plasma, and it has certain small amounts of uh, stem cells and growth factors, and they inject it into the damaged areas. It, it doesn't, you don't need to know that. All you got to know is that platelet-rich plasma crypto is probably a good one. Again, if you don't find this when you search for it, because I bought it. So anyhow, there's a wide plethora of different options out there, and I think this from here of what's going to grow and what's going to happen, and maybe get into that space, I can only see good things. Now, I can't say there's going to be like a huge winners this is i think a very long play but i mean look look that worked out pretty well for michael saylor uh michael strategy ceo and uh maybe it is i've got a couple that i'm saving and i think they're going to be winners but uh i got time so let me just think of the comment section but that is it for today so thanks for sticking with me all the way to the end i thought this was a pretty uh pretty good one um if you don't know i got a second channel it's called digital asset news clips and i made this for two reasons first of all is because sometimes the videos go way too long i talk way too much so what i did it as i thought to myself well if people really have you know uh, time on their hands they can 
watch these videos. But if not, let's just break them up into clips so they can watch the very easy parts and they can go about their day. So time is money, so I want to make it easy for everybody, so I put uh, Digital Asset News clips. Second reason was is because I don't want YouTube to come to me and go, hey Dan, great job on your channel, and we're going to shut you down. So this is kind of like the backup channel, just to make sure. So everything that I talk about in Digital Asset News, I will put here in clips, plus I will be doing uh, exclusive videos just for Dan clips, just to get the, uh, the channel going. So if you could head over there, watch a couple, subscribe, that'd be great. Don't have to, but I really appreciate it. All right, so that's it. So thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. If you like those videos, there's two more that's gonna pop up on your left and right. So check those out at your leisure. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you on the next one.